The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald Chapter 1 Nick Carraway, a World War I veteran and a recent graduate from Yale University, decides to leave the Midwest and move to New York. He started to work in the bond business and took up a rented house in West Egg, a Long Island community. West Egg is populated with people who made their own fortune but had no social connections. Nick's neighbor is Jay Gatsby who lives in a lavish mansion. Gatsby is a mysteriously wealthy man. Unlike his neighbors, Nick has a lot of connections in the East Egg. His cousin, the beautiful socialite Daisy Buchanan, lives across the bay in East Egg with her husband, Tom. Tom and Nick had attended Yale together. Nick goes to visit Daisy and her husband when he meets Jordan Baker, a professional golfer. While the four of them were having dinner and talking over superficial issues, Tom receives a phone call and leaves to take it. Daisy follows him and Jordan tells Nick that the call is from Tom's mistress Myrtle Wilson. Daisy tells Nick that she is unhappy with her marriage but sticking to it for her daughter. After dinner, the party breaks up. Nick reaches his home and sees Gatsby leaving his mansion and stretching on the lawn. He wants to call out, but holds back, because Gatsby gave a sudden intimation that he was content to be alone. Nick looks out at the water, but all he can see is a green light burning across the bay at the end of Tom and Daisy's dock. Chapter 2 Tom and Nick are on a train to New York when Nick observes the Valley of Ashes, the stretch of land between West Egg and New York City. This is the place where Tom's mistress Myrtle lives with her husband George Wilson. The place is an industrial wasteland with a decaying billboard. Tom convinces Nick to get off at the station and visits the garage of George Wilson. Nick describes George Wilson as a lifeless man with good looks. He is a car repair garage owner. Myrtle soon arrives at the garage and uses the excuse of seeing her sister in New York to get away with Tom. The three of them reach Tom's apartment which he keeps for his affairs. At the apartment, Myrtle calls in her sister, Catherine, and her friends, the McKees. The group gossips about Jay Gatsby and Catherine claims that he is related to Kaiser Wilhelm who was the World War I ruler of Germany. After getting excessively drunk in the evening, Myrtle becomes more and more outspoken about her life. She becomes very obnoxious and starts saying inconsiderate things about Daisy. Tom warns her to stop talking about his wife, but she continues taunting him. In frustration, Tom hits Myrtle breaking her nose. The party ends with this, and Nick and McKees leave. Chapter 3 Jay Gatsby is well known for his huge parties throws one over the weekend. The parties usually lasted throughout the night. The party guest marvels at Gatsby's. Luxurious car, his enormously big swimming pool, elaborate food menu, a well-stocked bar, and a full orchestra. Nick receives a handwritten note inviting him to Gatsby's parties. When he arrives at the party, he finds that most of the people at the party weren't even invited and have never met the host. They usually come to enjoy the drinks and the dance. Nick tries to find the host, but ends up meeting Jordan Baker. They start walking around and hear all kinds of rumors, one being that he killed a man once in cold blood. On the lawn, Nick begins to converse with Mr. J. Gatsby. Without knowing who the man actually was, Nick tells him rumors he heard about Gatsby. Gatsby apologizes for not being a good host. Nick is amazed at Gatsby's easy style and the interest he shows up while talking to his guests. Soon, both realize that they have served in the same division during the war. Gatsby is called away for a phone call. He later sends his butler to ask Jordan Baker to talk to her about something between only the two of them. Towards the end of the party when Jordan meets Nick again, she tells him that it was the most amazing thing but she promised not to tell anyone. Nick meets Jordan back in the midsummer and starts dating her. Even though Nick realizes that Jordan is not entirely honest, he is still attracted to her. Chapter 4 As the summer progresses, Nick gets better acquainted with Gatsby. One afternoon, Gatsby shows up at Nick's door and tells him that they are going to New York for lunch. While driving in Gatsby's Rolls Royce, Nick realizes that Gatsby is aware of the stories propagating across the town. He tells Nick about his past. He tells that he comes from a wealthy family in Midwest, 
got educated from Oxford, and received medals of valor extraordinary from Montenegro, during World War I. Nick is skeptical of his story, so Gatsby shows Nick his photograph from Oxford and the medal to validate his story. At lunch, Gatsby introduces Nick to his business partner, Meyer Wolfsheim. He is a professional gambler and the man rumored to have fixed the 1919 World Series. While at lunch, Nick spots Tom and goes over to greet him with Gatsby. Gatsby looks highly uncomfortable in Tom's presence. There is some unknown tension between Tom and Gatsby. When Nick meets Jordan, she tells her the remarkable thing Gatsby told her. Gatsby and Daisy were in love five years ago. In 1917, they volunteered for the Red Cross. When Gatsby went to war, she promised to wait for his return. But she accepted Tom's proposal and got married to her. Gatsby bought the house in West Egg to remain closer to Daisy and throws the parties hoping she would come by someday. Jordan also informs Nick that Gatsby wants him to arrange a reunion between them. Chapter 5 At Gatsby's request, Nick arranges for Daisy to come over for tea. He asks her not to bring Tom along. On the day of the meeting, Gatsby sends a gardener to cut Nick's lawn and flowers to decorate the interiors of Nick's house. He arrives an hour early and begins freaking out. When it's time for Daisy to arrive, Gatsby exits the house only to reappear at the front door accidentally. They all meet in Nick's living room. The meeting gets awkward and there are moments of silence. To give them some privacy, Nick decides to excuse himself, but Gatsby follows him. Nick reassures him that Daisy is just as embarrassed as he is and sends him back. After about half an hour, when Nick joins Gatsby and Daisy back, they seem to be enjoying each other's company. Gatsby is glowing with happiness and tears of happiness rolling down Daisy's cheeks. Gatsby takes both of them to his house. Gatsby gives them a detailed tour of his mansion. Daisy is impressed with every aspect of the house. Gatsby then shows Daisy his collection of imported shirts. She buries her head in the shirts and starts to cry. As the day progresses, Gatsby and Daisy get lost in their own world. Nick leaves as he realizes his presence is not required. Chapter 6 As Gatsby gains more popularity in town, a reporter visits his mansion to know more about his story. Gatsby had a humble beginning. He was born in a farmer family in North Dakota. His name initially was James Gatz. He used to roam around in Minnesota thinking about what he wanted to be like. He once saw a yacht and went to inform Dan Cody, the owner about the storm coming. Dan Cody took him under his wings and taught him yachting. He introduced Gatsby to the world of wealth and luxury. When he died, Gatsby hoped he would inherit his fortune, but could not because of Dan's mistress. Several weeks passed without Nick seeing Gatsby, he visits Gatsby's mansion. He is shocked to see Tom along with his two friends who came in for a drink after a day out riding. They shallowly invite Gatsby to dinner which he eagerly accepts. The three of them leave without Gatsby. Tom becomes increasingly suspicious of Daisy and does not want her visiting Gatsby alone. He accompanies her to one of Gatsby's parties. Gatsby asks Daisy for dance and the two of them sneak out for half an hour. Tom is unpleasant and rude throughout the evening. The party is over after they leave and Nick and Gatsby talk about it. Gatsby is worried that Daisy did not have a good time. Nick cautions Gatsby that the past cannot be repeated, Gatsby spiritedly replies, of course you can. Chapter 7 Gatsby's evening parties come to a halt and he fires all his servants so that no one would be gossiping about him and Daisy. Daisy visits his mansion in the afternoons. Daisy invites Gatsby over lunch. During the luncheon, Tom realizes that Gatsby and his wife are having an affair. Gatsby stares at Daisy with undisguised passion and Daisy recklessly remarks. Tom, extremely upset about this, decides to go to town to get a bottle of whiskey. They all set out. Tom, Jordan, and Nick are in Gatsby's car while Gatsby and Daisy are in Tom's car. Tom pulls out at Wilson's gas station. Wilson tells Tom that he and Myrtle are moving west since his wife is having an affair with someone he does not yet know. 
Tom, enraged with fear of losing his wife and mistress, confronts Gatsby at the Plaza Hotel. Tom accuses Gatsby of never going to Oxford and making his fortune through bootlegging. Gatsby, unintimidated by Tom, tells Tom that Daisy doesn't love him, instead, she loves him. Gatsby pushes Daisy to her breaking point, but she stays with Tom. Daisy and Gatsby leave in Gatsby's car. Jordan, Nick, and Tom follow them. On the drive back, Myrtle runs out to the street because she mistakes Gatsby and Daisy for Tom. They had no time to put brakes and she was killed instantly. They did not stop to help. Nick, Tom, and Jordan arrive at the scene after the accident and find Myrtle's body laying on a work table. Tom is broken to see his mistress dead. Tom learns that the car that struck Myrtle sounds like that of Gatsby's by description. He assures Wilson that it was not him instead Jay Gatsby who ran over his wife. When Nick bumps into Gatsby, he pours his rage onto him for driving over an innocent woman and not returning for help. Gatsby tells him that it was Daisy behind the wheels, but he will be taking the blame for her sake. He says he will wait outside Daisy's house in case Tom abuses Daisy. Chapter 8 The next morning, Nick visits Gatsby, who has returned dejected by Daisy. Nick advises him to get away from West Egg until the scandal of Myrtle's death is quiet. Gatsby refuses and tells Nick about the time he first met Daisy. Gatsby met Daisy in Louisville in 1917. He was dazzled by her beauty, wealth, and social status. The next day, Tom tells George that Gatsby was the driver of the car which hit Myrtle. George, who believes that the driver of the car must be Myrtle's lover, and he must have killed her. Furious George goes over to Gatsby's mansion and shoots him in the pool, and then turns the gun on himself. Nick, worried when he cannot get through to Gatsby on the phone, leaves work early and discovers the bodies. Chapter 9 Gatsby's mansion is flooded with police and paparazzi who are speculating stories about his murder, his life, his wealth, and his relationships. Nick arranges as grand a funeral as Gatsby's parties, but finds that Gatsby's enormous circle of acquaintances has vanished. Tom and Daisy had left town, Meyer Wolfsheim and Kilt Springer had refused to attend the funeral. Only two people attend the funeral including Gatsby's father, who was very proud of his son's achievements. Months after, Nick bumps into Tom in New York. In their short meeting, Tom admits that he told Wilson that Gatsby killed Myrtle. Nick is outraged, but Tom insists that Gatsby deserved to die. Nick shakes Tom's hand and leaves. After breaking up with Jordan, Nick prepares to move back to the Midwest. On his last night, he visits Gatsby's house and stares across the bay at the green light in the distance.